Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And let's get right into one of the craziest stories we have covered in Virtual Legality. And if you are not new here, you know that that is saying something on your screen right now is a statement from Sony Interactive Entertainment that throws no small amount of shade at CD Projekt, CD Projekt Red, Cyberpunk 2077, and what those two companies have put Sony through. You got to do some reading between the lines, but hey, that's why you're in virtual legality. So let's read the statement. SIE, Sony Interactive Entertainment, strives to ensure a high level of customer satisfaction. Suggesting, of course, that something somewhere is not giving its customers that level of satisfaction. Therefore, we will begin to offer a full refund for all gamers who have purchased Cyberpunk 2077 via the PlayStation Store digitally on their PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, or PlayStation 5. So, as we talked about earlier in the week, CD Projekt Red went out with a statement on Monday that was a little bit nuts insofar as they apologized for deliberately hiding visual performances of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One version of Cyberpunk 2077. They apologized for that, said, oh, we will fix it up. Don't worry about it. But you can go ask for a refund using the PlayStation Network or Xbox system respectively. And then kind of had a sentence in here that said, if if that doesn't work, you can contact us. But that maybe probably, and now it turns out really did, only apply to boxed versions of the game. And then when they were asked about it on their investor emergency call after that statement, they said, hey, a lot of people have said we got some special treatment from Microsoft and Sony. That's not the case. Anyone who has purchased any title on the PlayStation Network or the Microsoft storefront can ask for a refund. And if it's made within certain boundaries, usually related to time, usage, and so on, they can get that refund. Our procedure here with Microsoft and Sony is not different than with any other title released on any of those storefronts. And we talked about this on Monday. We translated this a little bit and we said, that sounds crazy. Or I guess the transcript was probably on Tuesday. So many cyberpunk videos this week. But that statement is actually crazy because they went out and told their consumer base on Monday, go ask for a refund. And this was unusual enough that you would think that a publisher of Cyberpunk CD Projekt Red size would tell Sony or Microsoft or retailers that they were planning to go out with a statement like this. But instead, in that transcript, they revealed that they didn't talk to anybody. They just meant, hey, go look at the PlayStation Network refund policy. Only the PlayStation Network refund policy says, if you've started to download something, you can't return it to us unless the content is quote unquote faulty which is a standard of various legal means in various jurisdictions, but suffice it to say bad frame rate, even significant bugs don't generally rise to the level of the game doesn't perform, that it's faulty, at least as Sony has interpreted it before now. This was, of course, helped slash hurt by CD Projekt going out with a statement that said, hey, 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 people have said a lot of stuff about the console versions, but the game won't have crashes. The main bugs will be eliminated. We're looking to improve both game and graphic fidelity. And it's not like the game doesn't launch or is unplayable, which if I'm Sony, I look at and say, well, you're saying it's not faulty, except you've told all your people to come after us. And not only have you already put us in a bad spot because there's so much stuff being said about your game being unacceptable and we approved it through our certification process. And you are saying in this transcript, oh yeah, they probably shouldn't have approved that one. We, We thought we'd get it fixed, but we didn't. Now you're sending your consumers after us, and at the point of sale, they become upset, justifiably so, at us for denying them a refund using the policy that we've always had because we assume our developer-publisher partners are going to release a game that functions. So they've been dealing with this all week. There have been articles about Sony denying refunds and making Sony look like a bad guy when CD Projekt and CD Projekt Red are the real bad guys in this particular story. And Sony finally said, enough, fine. We will give refunds to your customers. Also, SIE will be removing Cyberpunk 2077 from the PlayStation Store until further notice. 
Sony is taking it off the store. You cannot purchase it. You cannot, I believe I saw some tweets going around. You can't share screenshots from it. It's not listed on the store anymore. You can play it if you already purchased it, especially if you're on PlayStation 5 where it appears to function at least relatively well. But other than that, CD Projekt will be getting no sales in this holiday season through the Sony digital infrastructure for Cyberpunk 2077 for the foreseeable future until further notice. As I said in my thumbnail, indefinitely. This story is absolutely crazy. And CD Projekt killed themselves to try to get this game out by the holiday season because they haven't released a real significant AAA title since The Witcher 3. And now that major release that they killed themselves to get out is not going to be available on the most popular console on earth. This is why we went out with videos this week and said CD Projekt, CD Projekt Red should probably stop talking. They are digging their own grave. And it's also why we did a video yesterday that commented on the fact that GOG.com, also owned by CD Projekt, was not covering itself in glory by saying that they would release the game Devotion and then pulling it back, saying that they received many messages from gamers, which strained credibility to the breaking point when we know how China and how Chinese individuals feel about Devotion and why it was removed from the Steam store. And if you're interested in that story, you can check out my video on the topic. At the end of the day, you now have a CD Projekt game that isn't going to be available and it's going to really, really hurt their bottom line. If we go back to that transcript, we see that the pre-orders for this game that they touted to the world before all of this happened this week, that being so popular, 8 million pre-orders sold, that they were split 59% PC and 41% console, but also that their expectation was that PC gamers are more active on the pre-order front and then consoles tend to get stronger after the release. Well, one major console ecosystem, the entirety of the PlayStation ecosystem, is no longer going to be available to them this holiday season. And we don't know when Sony will put it back up. Could be after one seven-day patch that CD Projekt Red has said is coming here in this week before Christmas. It might not be until the January major patch or even the February major patch. Because understand what happened here. CD Projekt put Sony in an untenable position. And what happens when you do that to a business partner is that they respond very strongly. Oh yeah, we'll give you your refunds back, but you're not allowed on the store anymore because as far as we're concerned, you've told the world that your product is faulty. And if your product is faulty, it has no place in the Sony ecosystem. So with that as the background, with so many potential issues for CD Projekt and CD Projekt Red, they had no choice but to give an emergency board concession here today. As soon as this happened from Sony, they released a board statement that said the following, the management board of CD Projekt with a registered office in Warsaw, Poland, hereby publicly discloses the decision of Sony Interactive Entertainment, obviously Sony's decision, to remove Cyberpunk 2077 from the PlayStation Store until further notice. The decision was undertaken following our discussion with SIE regarding a full refund for all gamers who had purchased Cyberpunk 2077 via the PlayStation Store and want a refund at this time. All copies of the game previously purchased digitally on PlayStation Store remain available for use by their respective buyers. Gamers can still buy physical versions of the game in retail and mail order stores. All copies, whether digital or physical, will continue to receive support and updates from the company. The decision was undertaken following our discussion with SIE, right? What we talked about on Monday and Tuesday that said, okay, any normal, huge, multi-billion dollar publisher, if they're going to go out with a statement as unusual as this, is going to have talked to GameStop and Best Buy and Sony and Microsoft and made sure that they at least notified their business partners, even if they didn't ask for consent or permission, at least told them this was coming that you were going to get calls from your customers because 
even if most people are satisfied with the cyberpunk experience on, say, the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4, on the margins, there are going to be at least a significant number of people that say, all right, if refunds are available, I'm going to go get them from Sony. I'm going to get them from Microsoft or GameStop or Best Buy or wherever. And instead, what you've seen this week is GameStop in a leaked email exchange saying, hey, just tell people to go and talk to CD Projekt. You see Sony saying, hey, we're going to reject these because it's not faulty. You can look at their transcript. They say it still launches. It passed our certification. It's just bad. And that happens. There are bad games. It doesn't mean you get a refund under the PlayStation Network policy. And CD Projekt effectively made them change it. They got on the phone and probably in a fairly heated conversation said, hey, this is what's happening. You got to give these refunds to people. So that's not our business. We're not going to do that. Are you going to subsidize us, CD Projekt? And CD Projekt probably said, no, we're not going to subsidize the amount that you would have earned on these sales. We're going to have to go in this together. And Sony said, hey, if we're going in this together, then we're going to remove this like a game that snuck onto the store, that defrauded us out of our certification process. We are going to remove it until you make it right even though you were the most anticipated game of the year. You're the successor to The Witcher 3, one of the most popular games of our previous generation or current generation in terms of the generation that's causing them so much heartburn on this particular issue. And Sony means business. And now what happens from here? Well, all eyes turn to Microsoft, the other major hardware manufacturer with a digital portal and a piece of hardware in the Xbox One base system that if you go and look at Digital Foundry, you look at reports about how the game plays on that Xbox One system is just as bad, if not worse, than the PlayStation 4 system. The only problem, of course, is that Microsoft is the marketing partner with CD Projekt and Cyberpunk 2077 was one of their silver bullets at the end of the year. This is the Xbox.com home screen right now. Cyberpunk 2077, Night City Changes Everybody, bright yellow, huge ad before you can even go and look at other Xbox stuff. So Microsoft has a decision to make. Are they going to do something similar to Sony? They've already apparently been giving more refunds. When we looked at their policy in earlier videos, you saw that they had a little bit more flexibility, that their refund policy was essentially, hey, we will think about what's happened in context with this potential return, whether you're abusing the system, what exactly this particular game is. And so they were able to be more flexible on the fly than Sony that said, nope, nope, flexibility is not what we do here. We don't give you refunds unless the game is faulty. And so Microsoft has been giving some refunds already, but now their major hardware competitor has taken it off the store. Do they remove it on the same kind of premise that it's not acceptable for an Xbox One consumer to have purchased the game? Do they keep it? Because now it's a little bit more attractive in the digital infrastructure on Xbox. Hey, this is the only place you can get Cyberpunk right now, unless you go physical. And of course, that is potentially an even more significant question, right? As the board of CD Projekt put out there, you can still buy it. You can still buy a physical version of the PlayStation 4 version of Cyberpunk 2077. You can put it in your 2013 PlayStation 4 and play it. Only now in the real world, the hardware manufacturer, Sony, has told everyone that they feel that this piece of code, this game running on that system, is not something that is a satisfying consumer experience. And really, if you put their statements and their policies together, that that game as it exists on that disc is faulty. And so if you're Walmart, if you're Best Buy, if you're Target, if you're GameStop, do you actually wind up pulling this from the shelves yourself and going and trying to get recompense from CD Projekt, potentially WB, who's doing some publishing for them? Because otherwise, you can't, go out with a game in which the hardware manufacturer has told the world it doesn't work on our system. You're opening yourself up to legal liability or at bare minimum administrative difficulty in the future. So the question is, and I put it at the very bottom of the thumbnail to this video, is how many more dominoes will fall? Everybody thinks about Xbox. Absolutely. That's the digital storefront that makes the most sense to think about. But outside of Xbox, you've got an entire physical world in which the CD Projekt board believes they're still going to be able to make money. And if that goes away, you're talking about an apocalyptic financial event 
for a publicly traded company and a publicly traded company that as of all of a month ago was gamers best friends was somebody that everybody thought highly of i think there's never a case where everybody thinks highly about any given entity or person but whose goodwill and reputation has been 100 percent completely burned to the ground and what do you do if you are a retail partner do you get on those heated phone calls what does cd project do in that space And yeah, it's ironic that they just took a game down that they didn't want to sell yesterday and are now going to be facing that question at bare minimum behind closed doors, on phone calls, on Zoom calls, in teleconference, and otherwise with every single economic partner that they have. Why? Because they didn't take the steps necessary before going out with a statement like this one and then they told their investors they didn't do a darn thing to facilitate anything that they promised here and to gamers, really anything that they've promised for the past five, six, seven, maybe even eight years. And so that's virtual legality for today. I wish I had better news. God knows this cyberpunk story has been wild and maybe virtual legality is bad luck. It seems like when we pick up one of these stories, they go for video after video after video, but I could not have anticipated that CD Projekt would not only shoot one of its feet off on Monday, it would shoot the other foot off on Tuesday, start aiming at other appendages throughout the week before Sony finally came in and ended it for them fairly dramatically after hours late on Thursday night. What'll happen tomorrow? I guess we'll just have to tune in to find out. If you like this discussion, we're talking about the business and law of video games, pop culture, software, music, television, TV, all the time. That's what we do here. Hopefully, adding a little bit more information and education to the stories that you're already interested in. If you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it on a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode, maybe CD Projekt Red related, who knows, coming up soon. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.